now I'd like to introduce the Honourable Susan Lee, MP, Minister for Health and Aged Care and Minister for Sport, to come and say a few words. Please give her a round of applause. Thank you very much, Carly. To you as CEO of the College of Nursing, to your president, Cathy, to the wonderful members of the nursing profession that have made their way to Parliament House today on this first, but definitely not last, meeting, to my parliamentary colleagues, our Shadow Health spokesperson, Catherine King, and David Gillespie, Assistant Minister for Rural Health, will be talking to you shortly. You've got a lot of speeches, but they're all short. Um, thank you for having me. Can I acknowledge the traditional owners? of the land on which we stand and say that I also would like to acknowledge the role of nursing in uh, what should be and is the highest priority of all health ministers to close the gap in Indigenous life expectancy. I feel very close to nurses. My mother was a nurse. She migrated, well she was actually uh, took one of those boats, um, which came to Australia um, many years ago and she, she had trained at St Thomas's in London and she did midwifery training at the Royal Prince Alfred and then she went to Thursday Island and did remote area nursing and fell in love with the country so much that she insisted many, many years later when married with children that we all come back here. And then she became a, um, a, a well, what is now called a mental health nurse and later in life what she describes as the most rewarding part of her profession, she became a palliative care nurse. So. Um, I have to say that um, palliative care is a particular interest of mine and I think it's because of that, because growing up in a house where uh, it certainly wasn't ghoulish to talk about death and dying, it was just an important part of living. I, um, in, in that little piece of family history, I suppose I want to capture all of the things that nurses do and the diversity of your profession is incredible and the way that you can contribute in so many different areas is incredible. Therefore, there are challenges. There are challenges for us in government to use your skills, to use your resources, to bring you into so many different levels of decision making. And of course, there are challenges for you as a profession because sometimes you disappear in a direction that um, it might be hard to come back from into what would be described as broader mainstream practice. Sometimes, and I talk to a lot of nurses in primary care because I visit a lot of GP surgeries, they describe their experience in the hospital system and why, for various reasons, they don't necessarily want to go back there or it's a different time of life. But I certainly heard your message, Cathy, about reskilling, about continuous professional development. So we as a society can make the most use of nursing qualifications along the way. It is vital, I think, as um, makers of health policy, and I want to give a shout out to Deborah Toms, the Chief Commonwealth Nurse, um, nursing officer, it is vital that we integrate your advice and your thoughts into different areas of policy making. So I don't want to stand here before you and just say, nurses are wonderful, you're top of the most trusted list of professions. Yes, you are, and so you should be. I really want to say I accept the challenge that we need to integrate your voice, the nursing voice, more into the things we're doing and I promise I will take that away as homework and that means that the formal committees that we set up and Cathy mentioned the MBS schedule, the MBS review um, and we had a chat about that earlier and while we have a specific portion of that that's dedicated to of course the nurse practitioner and midwifery items in the review, nursing has something to say about all of the items even though nurses may not receive the MBS benefit, they're there in the process and yes, we need to make sure that your advice is part of that review. Similarly, as we build a healthcare homes model, which I as health minister am just so excited about because it is a key reform in primary care. It really does um, change the way that primary, it will change the way that primary care is delivered in Australia, not least because it will do something to address the changed circumstances for both patients and the profession. As we move from the old-fashioned GP who knew you from cradle to grave, who was there at your bedside, who could say to the hospital staff, I know what Mr Smith, Mr. Smith would want at this time of his life, um, who could provide that continuity. As we move away from that to a series of often specialised interventions, 
it's so important that we bring people back to a home base in general practice. That's what healthcare homes are. And I'm really excited about the role of nursing in those healthcare homes because the medical practices that I've seen, several ahead of their time, that have nurse, that I call nurse-led general practice, uh, will become much more the flavour of the future. There's so much more that nurses can do to support the um, medical workforce and to lead the medical workforce because sometimes the health care is provided only by the nurse, the ongoing continuity, the difference between uh, ending up as another statistic in a host an avoidable hospital readmission is because of good nursing out in the community, out in primary care and of course in the hospital service itself. So um, <laughs> please, please feel very free to keep in touch with me. Now Bill Coote is my senior advisor, he's going to wave. So you can all descend on him um, <laughs> with all of, um, with, with, with all of the, uh, the agendas that I know you have and the passion that I know you bring to what you do every day. We want to make um, your contribution to health policy significant and we look forward to an ongoing conversation. Thank you again.